because I already have these verticals on here, I'm just freelancing these other verticals. Okay. This one actually has some lines going this way. Yeah, and that way. At this point, it gets kind of fun. Okay, we're pretty much done with this side. The problem here is that there's so many windows. There's 12 per row, per, per floor. And I don't know, there's 60 floors or something. I don't want this to become so dominant. So I'm gonna take a very little flat brush. Yeah, I think this one. And I'm gonna, even though those windows look black to me, I am not gonna make them that dominant because I think all that black would take over this painting. So I'm gonna just use a little bit of this brown that we have here, make it not too dark. That's too yellow for me. I think I'll add um, probably a little purple. Uh, I think I'm okay with that. Seems a little greenish. Let me add a little bit more blue. Let's try that. I'll find my paper to test that color. Um, that's actually a little darker than I want. I'm going to put a little bit more orange in. Let's try this color. Not quite, you know what, this color might work on these windows. So let's try that. And I can just barely see some of my uh, pencil lines. We can hear some ringing and some clanging. We're not sure what it is. We don't know if it's a train. We don't know if it's church bells. We're painting here on a Sunday, so maybe it's the church bells. I'm gonna stop there. I think that's enough on that side. And I'm still trying to figure out what color I should use on this other side. Actually, I'll put one more row kind of down here so it doesn't look like I've just forgotten about it. I think that'll work. They're a little wavy. I'm going to add another row in between. <laughs> a little wavy. <laughs> oh, that's funny when I'm looking at them straight up. We'll see if we can get them fixed up a little bit. Yeah, that's a little better. Okay, so for this side, I'm gonna need something that's lighter and a little rosier. Let's try a little of this orange. Oh, I think that might be good. I'm gonna add some more water, so I'll make sure I have enough. Now I have done architectural paintings where things are very precise. Charles Sheeler, a watercolorist, 
is one of my favorite paintings and you might want to look up some of his work. It's S-H-E-E-L-E-R and uh, he died about 1956 I think and his paintings are just gorgeous. They become very abstract because he simplifies shapes and he has these incredibly crisp, crisp um, edges and crisp lines. And I have done paintings like that before. And if I were doing a painting like that, so this painting is taking, I'm guessing maybe two or three hours. Um, and if I did it with an architectural detail like that, um, it might take 15 to 20 hours. And some of the paintings I've worked on have taken up to 40 hours. There's so, so much detail in them. And I'm, I enjoy those. Uh, but my spirit, my natural spirit, is to be a lot looser. So it's good to practice both ways. I'm glad I picked these colors for these windows. I think this is just the right shade for these on this side. Even though, as I said, to me they look black. If I would have made all of these dots black and all of these dots black, I think it would have been so dominant. It would have overtaken everything else going on here. And this building's not that important. We just want it to show up, but we don't want it to take over the whole painting. So, we are, we are coming along. On this, on this side of the building, I will go down all the way, just because it'll butt right up into this one, and it'll, I think it'll look more complete if it's gone all the way. This one, I think, needs to be a little bit more. And those got a little light. And I could use a couple up here at the top. There. OK. We're getting the buildings in. We've got the lines in. We'll do more lines over here. This one line is still bothering me because it's a little too dark. Um, let's see if, I'm not sure if I can take it out with a, if I can just take a little out, I'd feel better. I'm thinking that's helping. Great. It was just too dominant. Mm-hmm, I think that's a little bit better. Okay. Good. Over here, um, this building, shockingly, has like this beautiful gold color in it. So we're going to try to um, wipe off my palette a little bit and see if we can get that pretty gold color. You can tell too when you're doing a painting, you don't need 15 or 20 brushes. I generally, as you can see, use a round brush, maybe two round brushes of different sizes, and maybe two flat brushes. I did use the fan brush too, which I don't usually use. Um, but you can tell you don't have to have a huge assortment of brushes. I know a lot of my students sometimes, uh, they think if they buy, the more brushes they buy, they'll, the more successful they'll be. And what they end up doing then is they'll buy really inexpensive brushes. And the problem with that is you need a brush that's going to hold its shape. You don't want a brush that's going to be so flimsy and cheap that it falls apart or leaves bristles or ugh, a, a bad brush is just a terrible thing. So it's much better to spend a little bit more, get a better quality brush and only have two or three of them rather than having 15 terrible brushes. Really, it's a, it's a terrible thing to try to do a nice painting with a, with a bad brush. Okay. Here on this building, it's this kind of neat gold color. This might be a little too bright, but I'm okay with it. And we're just going to go all the way down. Again, if I were super obsessive about this, I could use a straight edge that has a special edge on it where I can run the brush along the edge. And in my more detailed, more architectural ones, I do that. But we don't have to in this one. I can make this a little bit lighter for the upper layers. It's 
very sunny looking. These I'm going to add a little bit of blue to, I think, because these would be sides facing away from the sun. They would be less, less bright, more cool color. I'm going to let that dry. And while I'm working on these colors, remember I said this was a construction tube. It's almost the same shade. A little bit more yellow. Yeah. Let's see on this. This might be a hideous color. We'll find out, right? I like that little pop-up color. Okay. But because I have this pop of color over here, it's a little distracting because it's no place else. So I'm going to add, at the edge of these windows, I'm going to add some of this color too. It won't be so bright, but it'll definitely bring the eye across. Do you see how that helped kind of balance that color out? This still might be too bright, and that's fine. I can paint over it. Um, I think I might also just add some of that color, some of these windows. There. Okay. This has banding across it. It's a concrete color and then it's kind of a tan color. So I'm going to take a little bit of our gold here. I'm going to add some burnt sienna. Too much. So I'm just going to pull a little bit more out here. Uh, that's a little bit better. A little bit browner. Um, I'm going to add a little blue to dull it down just a bit, not a huge amount. I like that better. So the first part of the band is very light. So I'll just paint this light color all the way across. I'm going to let that dry a little bit. And then these windows, they have plastic in them, so they are almost a light gray. Too dark. These little sample sheets can turn out to be kind of fun at the end of a painting. Not only do you get to see a lot of the colors that you've sampled, but in some ways they get to be their own little abstract painting. So, I'm going to make these very modeled because they, they have a lot, of, lot of kind of weird, because they're plastic, they have a lot of different colors and shapes, uh, illusions in the window. So I'm going to just dab some color in and then I'll come back and tip some other color in. And my pencil lines are still in there and that'll be fine because these windows are very uh, sloppy looking, so to speak, with the plastic flapping and, and everyone a little bit different color. I don't know what it's going to look like in the final painting. I didn't really think about that, that someone looking at this painting isn't going to really be able to imagine that there was just plastic in these windows. If it was too distracting, and we'll decide that in a few minutes, if it's too distracting, we can always fill them in with a darker color. We don't want people to look at it and think, well, what's going on in those windows? But I think we'll work it out. I 
again, I don't want this building to be the focal point. I really want my building in front to be the focal point. So I don't want to do too much work in these windows so they look um, riveting. I want them to be falling into the background. I grabbed a little orange there, no problem. Again, it helps carry some of this color into other areas of the painting. This is a little too bright, I can tell now. We'll fix it. I do like it though, I like bright colors. A little bit more color added to some of these windows. I think I'll put sills underneath them uh, so they look more windowish. I like adding a little bit of this blue in there. I know what I can do too. Even though I can't see these, I can use my imagination. I'm going to add a center crossbar in the windows. With a watercolor pencil. Actually, I kind of like those windows. They look like they're reflecting the clouds, too, even in their own small way, and that's fine. Okay, I'll take a... Well, I think I'll do the watercolor crayon. The watercolor crayon you can also dip in the water to use and, um, for example, let me show you. I could dip it in the water, let it get a little wet, and remember we talked about this looked almost like that Indian corn? If I dip it in the water, it gives me a really soft kind of line. I can pick up these smudges here in a minute. We're now going to add some of the finishing touches just to finish out some of the details on this on our buildings. And one of the buildings that I want, the building right across here, it has like these, I don't know, these medallions or something. So I'm using a watercolor pencil and getting it a little bit wet and adding some of these medallions at the top of the building. This might be a little too um, bold and so I probably in a minute, I'm going to run over them, wash over them with a brush, and it'll uh, moderate the color so it's not quite so dotty. You can use a watercolor pencil dry or wet. Typically, I use them dry, but again, you can do it either way. Actually, too, you can use them, let's say you're on a trip and you just have a couple watercolor pencils in your, in your bag. You can take them out with a little sketch pad and do a drawing, and when you get to a place that you have a little bit of water, you can take a brush and uh, go right over them and have a full color watercolor painting. They're quite remarkable that way. Okay, I've got the little medallions on there. I'm going to let them dry a bit. While I'm waiting for them to dry, I'm going to put the crossbars in these windows, and I think they'll look a little bit more window-like. This one's bigger, I'm going to make it extra. I'm also going to put the sill at the bottom of these windows, and I'll do that with a brush. I like that each of these windows is a little bit different. I think it's kind of fun. Oops, I forgot one. That's funny. Okay. Now, let me think about the sill color here. Let's try adding some blue to it to dull it down a little bit. And I think that's almost there. I'll add a little brown back in. Oh, that's so close. A little bit more brown. I'm good with that. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of a sill. I want to be careful that I'm not dragging over 
my wet paint. So I'm going to use my hand to support my hand. These, I think, they're up against the border. I'm not going to worry about putting a sill on those top ones. Now, like I said, I'm going to go through this and kind of dull this down because those got a little bit too dotty for me. I like that better. They're not so prominent in the painting. That's a little dark. And I, I don't like this with no color in it, so I'm going to add an edge here. The top and the bottom. And I know that I'm doing wet on wet, so it's going to all bleed together. I'm okay with that. It'll, again, help push this into the background so it's not quite, so it's not too dominant in the page. Here's a little bit of white. I'm going to bleed that out with this paint. Okay, now I think I'm going to take a little of this color out. This color was a little too much for me. I love it, but it's a little too much. So I'm just wetting it. I'm adding water. And now I'm going to take a clean piece of paper towel. Not much. And blot it out. That's probably more appropriate. I still get that pop of color, but it doesn't just rivet your eye over to that part of the painting. That part of the painting is not the most important part. What this yellow line does too though is as you're looking around the painting it acts as a block. Your eye is not going to go off the painting someplace else. You're going to come to the yellow and then re-enter the painting. As an artist it's important that you think about these things so your viewer will stay on your painting as long as possible. I'm going to add a few more lines to this building. Oops. Yeah, let me get, there we go. A few more lines to this building. That was a little crooked. I know, it seems funny that I'm worrying about crooked now. There. And then. By adding these lines, it also helps show the buildings turning. Because this is farther in the background, I'm making these lines lighter. And again, as I said, since this is face that is a, away from the sun, I'm going to add a little bit of a blue there because sides that are away from the sun are a little bit cooler, so I have a little bit more blue in them than sides that are facing the sun. Not a lot, but just a little bit to also help give the illusion of that side facing away from the sun. I think I'm pretty much done. What I might do, and what I sometimes do, is turn the painting upside down just to see how I like it, see how the composition works. So if we turn it upside down, <laughs> I think it magnifies some of the crookedness of these lines. I'm okay with that. Surprisingly, this line becomes quite dominant, but nicely it's balanced out with these other darks, so your eye does flow around. So it comes from this dark to this dark through here, back over to these darks, hits the yellow and re-enters the painting. And that's what you want, a visual circle so that your viewer is continually engaged in your painting. I'll turn it back right side up for you. So this is my painting. And it, we've been painting this afternoon on the rooftop in Minneapolis at Drive Through Productions. And thank you for joining me. I'm Jana Mason. Join us on this station for new episodes Watercolor with Jane M. Mason from Watching Paint Dry, LLC. Thank you for watching.